Welcome to part one of our shed video. We are gonna be discussing today how to build your ultimate shed custom for you. So stay tuned, we're gonna deal with layout and design, everything you need to know so that you can build what you need to get the creative space that's necessary for you to put your stuff away. So the most important part of building your custom shed is layout and design. Remember, design world, when we're designing something, it has to function. And it doesn't have to just function for everybody, it has to function just for you. So what you need to consider is, what kind of storage space are you creating? Now let's face it, in today's world, in North America, we are a consumer economy, we got stuff. We got so much stuff, we have garages attached to our house, we don't even put our car in it. We have sheds for gardening, and they're so full of stuff, you can't even begin to pot any seeds in there anymore. So we need more space. So the best way to do it is to build yourself a custom shed, get some of the things out of your way, like your lawnmower, so that you can use your other shed, get some room to store all your tools so you can get your garage back. This is the solution to a lot of your problems. So let's talk about what to do when you're thinking about building a shed First up, let's talk about the space that you need to build one. It doesn't seem to matter what kind of home you live in, no matter where you are in this country, you're going to need more space. So if you don't have a lot of yard, you might find yourself building like a little addition on the outside of your house and just some simple swing doors, that might be fine. But if you've got property like this and you're gonna have lawn maintenance equipment and you've got a lot of hobbies and that sort of thing, then you need a lot more space. So if you have the room for something rectangular, I like to suggest that. I like to have lots of doors on a storage area because I don't like it when you open the only door and you've got your lawnmower sitting right there in front of you and all you do is pitch things into the corner because you can't get into the room. And that ends up just being a bunch of clutter mess, right? So I like rectangles and we have a building code where we're from where we can go 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet high and we don't need to get a permit for that because it's not a permanent structure. So that's kind of the idea that we're gonna work with today. We're gonna to build it a little more rectangular, 10 by eight. But if you wanna get something longer or more square, or even make yourself a round Mongolian yurt, the secret is you need storage and you've gotta keep it dry. So let's talk about things that are in the backyard that are gonna cause you problems and how to avoid them. Now, before we build, we need to plan and there are four things you need to consider before you do that. Drainage, sound, wind, and ugly, all right? You wanna do four things with your shed. You wanna hide things that are unsightly. You wanna protect yourself from wind. If you get too much wind and it's making something difficult to go, grow in your garden, or you want privacy issues, or like we have a schoolyard behind us, so behind this property, we're actually gonna create this shed to be actually a sound barrier wall as well, which will be brilliant. No more kids screaming and school bells taking up the space in the afternoon. And the other thing you wanna deal with is drainage. Now this is crucial because this will affect the integrity of the structure. Almost every house that's built is built with the idea of drainage, where the water is supposed to be running away from the building, collecting in ditches or culverts or something like that. And back here, we are actually at the lowest part of this property, but on the other side of the fence, the drainage continues to go about another 10 or 12 feet, which means even though we're a four season climate and we're gonna get thaw and freeze cycles, we aren't gonna have a buildup of water turning to, to ice here. So when we build our shed, as long as we pour our concrete on top of a stone pad, we're gonna be just fine and we're not gonna experience all that heaving and cracking and breaking and tearing things apart. So this is good to go. So remember, drainage, wind, sound, and ugly. As long as you take care of all of those in consideration of what you're gonna build, you're gonna be just fine. Now what we have here is a really typical kind of pre-built shed, eight by eight by eight. It's got this double pitch roof. <laughs> Let's just see. All right. Yep, there's the lawnmower. And there's the and this is all you have access to for space. Typical. And this might not be a problem for you. This might actually be the solution you're looking for. The secret here is this homeowner built it on those little two by two foot concrete slabs on gravel. But when you build it that way, you have to make it dead perfect. Because these kind of prefab kits have no mercy if you don't have them exactly square and level and plumb. So just a word of warning, if you're gonna get a kit like this, which runs a little over 500 bucks, if that's gonna be enough space to solve your problem, you're gonna to wanna to watch step two of our program here to know how to pour a concrete pad, because that pad is gonna save you a lot of time and aggravation. It took him almost three days to build this from when I was talking to him. If he had the pad, he could have done it in an afternoon. 
So if this is enough solution for you, that's great. Word of warning, <laughs> my experience, no matter how big your storage area is, you're gonna fill it. So keep that in mind. If this is gonna be okay, maybe going an extra couple hundred bucks and learning how to build something twice as big might be a better solution. So just remember, when you're designing your shed or your outdoor building, keep in mind the neighborhood. Look at the lay of the land. Try to imagine what it's going to look like when it's there. You don't want what you make to be a huge monstrosity. So in our design, we're actually going to do just a single slope roof. And you can see in the background, if you put a big rectangle there with a single slope roof, it's going to fit in right along with the line of that cedar hedge. You're not obstructing your sight line. It's not going to look like a monstrosity from the other neighbors around the corner. And so you're not going to get any kickback from your neighbors, right? The other things for design, think about using big barn doors, lots of access. Think about having an, a secondary door around the side where you can bring the lawnmower instead of in the middle, off the corner, all right? Have one set of the walls set aside just for your lawnmower. If you tuck it away and you only have to sweep a couple of feet every once in a while from the grass clippings, it'll keep the rest of your shed nice and clean. I always like to say, put in a couple of simple windows, maybe something that opens up to get some airflow. I always like to pour my pad a little bigger than the building. It gives you an outdoor storage space. Maybe the opportunity for a little sitting area if you have a view that would take in this sunset. It's just a thought. And last but not least, think about some hanging planters or window boxes. Dress it up. Remember, it's a part of the home. It's just a little bit off the side. So if you make it look pretty, it'll actually increase the value of your property. And it's not gonna cost you that much. A little bit of sweat equity, right? But we're gonna show you everything you need to do. So stay tuned with us on the ride.